So we're doing, VO2, we're doing a VO2 max set, Lisa just doesn't know it yet. But. Recovery <laughs> sets. Open water swimming for me is that like true triathlon swimming. Uh, my first year of proper learning swimming was in Sydney at Bondi Beach and the coach was a surf swimmer. So I early got schooled into open water swimming. Uh, the stroke was like a surf swimmer's stroke uh, and getting in and out through the surf was like one of the most important things to be able to actually even swim at the beach. For cup. Uh, yellow. yellow. Yeah. In the beginning, it was just a challenge trying to learn to swim. In Sydney, which was three years after, I enjoyed the surf swimming part, but I was not a swimmer and I wasn't even allowed to swim, I was doing stroke correction. So it was probably around four or five years before I felt like a swimmer and that I could enjoy the, like, just swimming. Yeah. Hello, buddy Emo. Hey. hey. <laughs> you want ball? So we're doing Throwing VO2. Today? We're Good doing day. a VO2 max set. Lisa just doesn't know it yet. Open water swimming here at Plato's is super nice in the way you get to see Plato's in a very uh, different direction. Because once you get out in the water, you see the whole resort and you see the little fishing village which has been there from the very beginning. Um, there's quite a few fishes, uh, so it's kind of fun to do some excursions and just swim out and look at fishes. Uh, there's some big blocks and the water is super clear so you can see your hands and your stroke and your friends in the water and it's a nice way to break up the just the training part in the pool and the times and like the performance where you have to do and perform certain things in the open water you're more free and you can go by feel uh, and you can really just, just enjoy being in the nature So like most athletes, triathletes coming from Sweden, I was a non-swimmer. I had no background whatsoever in swimming, apart from the old traditional backstroke and breaststroke that you learn in school when you're like six, seven years old. When I started triathlon, I was second last out of the water for my first race. And I kind of early understood that if I want to make it in this sport, I will have to learn how to swim properly and to swim well, when you're starting when you're 16, 17, it's quite difficult. And today I have a lot of friends uh, starting with triathlon when they're 30 or 35 or they want to do an Ironman and then like, want to get into swimming. And the problem is that you have no relationship in the water. You have no feel for the water. And you have never spent really a lot of time in the water um, apart from like swimming in school or bathing with the kids. You're never going to be Lucy Charles or Jess Learmont because you have so few hours in the water. So for me when I started and I knew that I wanted to go to the Olympics and back in 2002 when I started it was a very very long way to walk to get to the level where I would be competitive at something like the Olympic Games. Um, I had various coaches throughout my career um, but the first thing that I really had to work on was body position and feel. In uh, running and biking, you get like 
a very, very long way with your physiology. If you have a good set of lungs and strong legs and you've been doing sport all your life, it's easy to adapt into that part of the sport. But swimming, you can't really just train your way to become a better swimmer. You can't muscle your way to it. Like I see so many, and pardon my um, um, generalization here, but a lot of middle-aged men with big pool boys and paddles trying to work their way into doing a really good Ironman in the swim. For me, swimming and what I had to learn in the beginning was to slow down and relax. So the number one was to find a body position and number two was to find the catch. So my coach that took me to the Beijing Olympics, my first one, uh, he never let me swim more than 25 meters at a time in the beginning because he wanted me to learn to feel the water. From there on, I progressed and eventually I made the second pack, which was good because then I had to spend two laps on the bike working really hard to get myself back into the race until I made the back end of the front pack where suddenly I started to run so much better because I didn't have to spend them two laps on the bike to make it up to the front pack, but I was already there. So to make the changes in the swim that was very open water specific, that got me into the front pack, saved so much energy that suddenly I was running one to two minutes quicker and I was spinning races. So for me, the biggest difference for my overall performance was the better swim that put me in a better position that I could run faster and that I could start to win races. What was super important for me too, to really get how to swim front pack in a WTS or World Cup race, was the difference with swimming well at your local club practice to take that skill and swim well in the open water. And I will never have like the super powers of the swim. I will always have to be a smart swimmer. And what my former coach did back to get me into that front pack was to identify the things that I needed to be good at. And when you swim open water, it's the same as when you're bike racing, you have a big pack and you can use that pack. So if you can't swim in the front, you can try to make smart decisions, position yourself, swim at feet, but you need to be good at swimming at feet because it's actually quite difficult. And you need to practice to swim on the shoulder, to swim on the feet, which if you haven't experienced it, saves maybe 20 to 30% which can bring you into be a lot quicker swimmer than if you have to time trial it by yourself on the side. But it's quite difficult to swim on feet too and you have to be concentrated and you have to be able to keep that concentration for the full race. And you also have to know when there's danger points that you might fall off or if there's a turn things happen and you have to be there. So what we did was to do a lot of practice in the open water, to swim with other people, to swim in a pack and also that your stroke is a good stroke for open water. When you swim in the pool, you have the whole lane for yourself and you have no people touching you. And most importantly, you have no bubbles. When you're in the open water, you're always gonna get bubbles from the person ahead of you. And the bubbles, you want, you want to catch the water on the bubbles. So you need to find water and you need to have a stroke that goes quickly in, that finds water and that can propel you forward. So the little tricks and tips that like took me from the pool swimming into the open water was to get that stamina to swim well over a long distance the concentration and the skill to stay on feet or under the armpit and to be able to have a stroke that can tolerate some waves some bumpy water being checked around by the people and to be very efficient when you're on someone's feet so really, he didn't care to make me a front pack, like a front front swimmer, because I wouldn't need that. The only thing I need to is to be in the pack, be safe and sound, and save energy while coming out in a good position. And I think that what's most important for most people, even in the longer races, if you race a half Ironman or an Ironman, you just want to put yourself in a good position, be fast, but also save energy. Some really key advice that had been given to me in my transition from a really bad, back of the race swimmer to a front pack swimmer. I think like there's three game changers in there. The number one is to swim faster, you have to slow down. And it sounds super easy and you hear it a lot of times, but to actually do it in practice, to separate your really hard, long, solid sessions from your easy ones and make the easy ones slow, balanced with a lot of floating, uh, floating drills, just laying on the surface, feeling your body weight, 
getting the feel for it. And slowing down, finding that balance has made me a lot faster when I need to go faster. So that's a really good one to like take on board and really like put into practice. Number two is hug the nanny advice. And that's something in your catch. So same with bubbles. Um, you want to hold on to the water. If you're too quick or too hard, too tense, you're not going to grab it, you're just going to pull through it. So if you picture in your head that you're hugging your nanny and she's a bit fragile, a bit old, so you have to be quite careful and you do that hug as you catch and then you build up the pressure. So that's another thing, like don't rush it, but to be gentle on the water and to actually get the water with you. And the last bit that I really try to remind myself before races or when I have to swim a little bit faster is the hole in the ice. That if you see the water and you can picture it frozen with a small hole in it, like a, in the ice if you want to pick up little fishes, that hole is where you want to put your hand. And you want to put your hand in through it, you want to anchor your body, and then you want to move your body over the hole. So when you're done with the stroke, the hand is the same place as where the hole was and you pull it up of the hole and you find a new one. So to get that feel in your head that you actually anchor, you're not pulling through the water and you're moving your body over your hand. That's also like a really good thing to picture and just trying to feel when you're swimming. But swimming is very, very difficult. And for me, it's still a, very much a work in progress. Uh, I spend a lot of time doing balance and drills and also spend a lot of time just getting the endurance and the, the strength that I and I don't know if it's because I'm a non-swimmer or if swimmers have that naturally, but I have to keep working on the feel and the endurance to have it when it comes down to a race. And I always try to have my little coach on the shoulder or picture in my head that someone is filming. So I really have to like spend every minute in the pool to make it worthwhile and to make sure that I'm kind of on top of things and doing the best that I can with the skill. Because if I lose the skill, I will lose my swimming and I will go nowhere in the water. So this was a bunch of mixed uh, ramblings about swimming. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the various uh, subjects. If you are interested in swimming tips, drills, specific stuff about open water racing, let me know, comment down below or give us a heads up that you really like this and we can go deeper into it. Uh, if you're curious about a wetsuit tutorial, Click on the link and there's a nice uh, how to put on your wetsuit in the best way possible uh, that you can follow. I hope you enjoy watching this and I uh, will see you for the next one.